Hallelujah, hallelujah. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. He said to them in reply, An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And there is something greater than Jonah here. At the judgment, the queen of the south will arise with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God gives a special grace. To begin to see the Gospels and the readings in a different light. To begin to see that what we learned as children is just like an infinitesimal little, little, little part of the Gospel. To begin to see that there's so much to learn, so much to enjoy from the rich fount, fount of the Word of God. So today I look at the, so the report is that Pharaoh and his servants changed their minds, you know. They had allowed the people to go from servile work, from offering themselves to service of work. You know that from the very beginning, God created human beings to know, to love, and to serve him. That was the reason why he, he created us, to worship. But now humanity, they are just walking. Walking under the slavery of Pharaoh. Walking and toiling under the burden and slavery away, slaving away under the sun and toil. Pharaoh did not allow them to focus on the only thing that matters. The will of God to worship, to be little, to adore, to serve God. So God had already called Moses. Moses, you know, go, go, go there and deliver my people. Go to Pharaoh and tell them. Go and meet them so that my people can be free to worship me. They'll go into the wilderness to worship. Free. And Moses has delivered this message. A lot had happened. A lot all has happened. And then, you know, of course, finally, we are told that the king was ready. He changed his mind, however, after saying, let them go. Okay, let them go. <laughs> Pharaoh is hard-hearted. Pharaoh does not want the freedom of the people of God. Pharaoh does not want the people to worship God. He is not worshiping God. He is not worshiping the true God. He is worshiping the false God. And the false God is the God of work. The God that takes them away from focusing on who they are. So while working, they lose their identity. While working, they fail while working. They lose who they truly are. 
But God knows. And you know, these same people cried to God, and now God has given them the pattern how to get out of this place. And now they are chasing to us. And now, you know, the warriors of Pharaoh, the chariots, are now chasing after them. <laughs> they don't know. What did we do to let these guys go? And the Israelites themselves, knowing that the Egyptians were chasing after them, were wondering, oh, now God is bringing us into a place of torment, into a place of death. He should have left us there in Egypt. And they are charging after Moses, the one who is to help them, the one who is assisting them, the one who is making sure that they get to the promised land. Who is, our, who is your friend? Who is your enemy? Is it Pharaoh or Moses? Who do you befriend? Pharaoh is offering something that looks like life, but it is death. All he wants from the Israelites is to keep them in captivity, in bondage. Satan loves to keep the people of God in captivity bondage, surreptitiously offering them a busy time. America is busy. <laughs> we are so busy. And we pride ourselves to be very busy. Only one thing is important. Worship. Only one thing is important. Worship. And Moses is calling us Moses is the old Jesus. Jesus is the new Moses. Calling us to freedom. Calling us out of the captivity of the evil one. Calling us out of the guilt and the shame of being bruised. Of being under, undergoing corruption in the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt is a place of slavery. Why did Jesus go to the land of Egypt? He was persecuted by Pharaoh, by Herod. They wanted to kill him. God took him to Egypt to, remember, to open that place up. <laughs> because that's always been a place of slavery. But the place of slavery, Joseph rose to become treasurer. The place of slavery, Jesus went there to open up finally. So that the, the devil, Pharaoh, will have no space to operate against the chosen people of God. All that matters is the glory of God. And Moses says, why are you, you know, yeah, he said, yeah. Tell the people of Israel, go forward. And you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. That impossible road, that impossible task, that one that is ahead, because the sea must be parted for us to pass through as children of God. Because there is a woman who stands on the sea, who is the star of the sea. And destroys all that is inside the sea. Because inside of the sea are the reptiles and are all the terrible, terrible, terrible animals that want to swallow humanity. We read this side by side with Revelation chapter 12. You see that woman who's sitting, standing on the saw of the sheep because Pharaoh, represented by the dragon, is looking for the children of God, those who testify to Jesus, those who belong to the woman. And that's why that sea was spotted they were told, the Pharaoh that you see today, the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more. The final day of judgment, we shall enter into the bowel, the womb of the Blessed Mother. At that place, the accuser of our brethren, the devil, the Pharaoh, the dragon, will be hauled into the sea. And we die. Do you see that? 
And when Blessed Mother said in 1917 that at the end, my immaculate heart will triumph, you can see that. Because she's the star of the sea. That sea that parted in Exodus, that gave life to the Israelites, but gave death to the Egyptians. So where do you want to be? You want to be with the Egyptians or with the Israelites? Are you afraid of Satan or you are going forward? I mean going forward. Going forward because you have an accompany. Going forward because you have the mother of God by you. Going forward because you have the star of the sea with you. Going forward because we have the one who has conquered, who we crush. And that's why we are doing the consecration to the Blessed Mother. Then, when we do continue the consecration, and you get consecrated, you know what? Then, you know that truly, the three days that Jonah stayed in the belly of the womb, you will recognize that Jesus stayed three days in the belly of the, of the earth, three days, and was resurrected to unleash graces. And the graces that Jesus brings only gets to us through the heart of the Immaculata. Gets to us only through the heart of the Blessed Mother. Nowhere else. You can't find grace anywhere else. Ave Maria, O Medina, O Mother. Proudly thy children who call upon thee. Thine are the graces unclaimed by another. Mater amabilis, ora pro nobis, pray for thy children who call upon thee. Ave Santissima, ave purissima, sinless and beautiful star of the sea. She sees this sea. She knows it. She sees her children being chased by Satan. She sees it. She sees her children being chased by Pharaoh. She sees it. She sees her children being hunted by the dragon. But she says, go forward. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Go forward. If, if children listen to mothers, then of course you'll be, not, you'll be okay. <laughs> I try to listen to my mother, you know, sometimes we get too familiar with mothers and, uh, you know, we don't want to. But sometimes that reinforces the strength of mothers. The wisdom of Solomon. There's someone greater than Solomon here. The one who is greater than Solomon is the Lord of life, the wisdom of the Father. And his mother is the seat of his son. Everything we know of Christ, there is a title of the Blessed Mother that corresponds to that, even though she's not divine, but she's only inferior to God. And she is the moon, and Jesus is the sun. We receive the light of the sun through the moon. Go to mother. I proclaim myself, I declare myself. Just this morning I was before her mantle, just kneeling down before her. And it just occurred to me, it just was given to me, that I have become the missionary of the mother of mercy. <laughs> missionary of Mary, mother of mercy. That's my vocation. That's my call. You are the guys who first hear that, don't you? <laughs> you are blessed. Let us become missionaries of Mary, Mother of Mercy. This is the time. Let us rise and pray. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, we pray for our Holy Father and the chair of Peter. Pray because the ravenous wolves and the fairies of this world, and the dragon is interested in that seed to soil and to bring blemish 
and to bring destruction to the children of God and to scatter us abroad so that we'll be fearful. Praying that our Immaculata Mary, Mediatrix of all graces, the advocate of all your oppressed people of God, the advocate of those suffering children of God, the advocate of the one who is suffering, the children who are burdened by Pharaoh, may take our petitions to the sacred heart of Jesus to defend our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the chair of Peter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all our bishops at this moment. Pray for the ravaging wolves that wants to scatter the church of the people of God, even now. There are so many people who do not go to church. There are so many people carrying and going about with communistic and socialist views. And they don't go to church. But they are looking for people in the church to work with to destroy the church. They don't go to church, but they know all the politics out of the church. We must not cooperate with those who want to destroy the church in any way. We are children of mother, and mother will preserve us. Pray for our, our, our bishops, pray for Bishop Thomas Zinkula of our diocese to be defended and protected so that the will of God will only be realized through his office. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for our priests, priests that have been called through the sacred heart of Jesus, priests that have been called only to give the heart of Jesus to everybody. Priests who have been called to be privileged sons of the Mary, the Blessed Mother of oh God, the Pure One. Pray that we will be devoted children. We will love our mother. We will love the mother who is the mother of the church. And suffer and die proclaiming only the truth that comes from the heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for you, our dear, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, in your desire for holiness. Go to the one who is the purest of creatures. Go to the one who breathed mercy for us. Go to the one who breathed grace for us. Go to the one who is the advocate of all the children of God. And she will advocate your case, and nobody can accuse you. Not even Pharaoh can accuse you. Not even Satan can accuse you, because she has been made a perpetual enemy of Pharaoh, of Satan. She's a perpetual enemy, and she will bruise him. So why not go to the one who is the champion? <laughs> Let us go to Mary. Let us go to the Immaculata and leave all our cares and our worries at us, Immaculate Heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray this morning for Richard O'Day, for whom we celebrate this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have allowed fear who are haunted by fear, who are haunted by guilt, who are haunted by their previous lifestyles, those who are haunted by a life of addiction, those who are haunted by the way they have lived their lives before, the moral choices they have made before, and those pharaohs are chasing after them even now, not, not wanting them to go. We pray that our mother will encourage them. Our mother will take them into our bosom. Our mother will continue to tell them to go forward, go forward, go forward. We will never look back to the life of sin, the life of debauchery, the life of adultery and fornication, the life of masturbation and, and pornography, the life that has been, been destroyed. So that those people will continue to seek now only, 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 only to do the will of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven. Give us the grace of surrendering ourselves totally to you. Give us the grace to go to our mother. Our mother is the one who introduces fathers to children so that she may introduce us to our loving God, our compassionate God, in whom is mercy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 